Hello and welcome to Otten Math in this edition of Otten Math. We are going to talk about two proof oriented triangle theorems. What a mouthful. We're going to talk about angle angle side theorem and the no choice theorem. All right, so let's get started. We got some pretty exciting stuff. The theorem 53 says if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of a second triangle, the third angles are congruent. That's a no choice theorem. And why is that true? Well, we proved in the prior lesson that the sum of the measures of all the angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees. So <clears throat> if I have a triangle that is equal to 180 degrees and I subtract the measure of angle B, which is equal to the measure of angle E, and then I subtract the measure of angle A, which is equal to the measure of angle D, then my differences are going to be the same. Remember, so if I subtract congruent angles from congruent angles, then their differences are congruent. So let's say, for example, that A is 30 degrees, then D must be 30 degrees, and E is 50 degrees, and then B must be 50 degrees because they're congruent. That leaves me with 180 minus, 180 minus 80 for the measure of angle C and also the measure of angle F. So if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of a second triangle, then the third angles have to be congruent. That's called a no choice theorem. You have no other choice based on the fact that the sum of the measure of the angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees. All right, let's talk about our second theorem. And theorem 54 says, if there exists a correspondence between the vertices of two triangles, such that the two angles in a non-included side of one are congruent to the corresponding parts of the other, then the triangles are congruent. Right, so an included angle would be in between two angles. A non-included angle would not be in between the two angles. <clears throat> uh, so that non-included side would not share both vertices, it would share just one. So in this case, I have an angle and angle that are congruent. So let's say this is A, this is B, angle B, angle C, angle D, angle E, and angle F. <clears throat> and I know angle A is congruent to D, angle C is congruent to F. By the no choice theorem, angle B must be congruent to angle E, which tells me that by angle side angle, B and E, side BC and EF, and angle C and F, by angle side angle that I have to postulate, that I have two triangles that are congruent. All right, so now I can say by angle angle side that two triangles are congruent if I have two angles in a non-included side. All right, so let's test your knowledge of this particular theorem. All right, so I, I call this got congruence. And my question to you is, are these two triangles congruent? I have an angle congruent to an angle, another angle congruent to an, another angle, and a side congruent to a side. Do I have angle, angle, side congruence? And the answer to the question is going to be no. All right, so if I were to mark up the diagram, A, B, C again, and D, E, F, I see that the relative order is not the same between the, of congruence is not the same between the two triangles. So I do not have congruence by angle, angle, side, nor do I have congruence by angle, side, angle. All right, so let's take a look at the next, I have three of these for you. Is, are these two triangles congruent? And the answer to that question is no. These two triangles are not congruent. Now, let me give you a trick for understanding angle, angle, side congruence. And that is, when you take a look at the angles that are congruent, this is angle A here, let's say, and this is angle, uh, so A, B, and C. And we have angle A that's congruent to angle D. And let's say this is E, so C is congruent to E, and then I have F. Right, the side, if I have angle, angle, side, now the side is not included between the two angles, so this could be angle, angle, side. But if I look at the side that's opposite the angle A, uh, it's CB. If I look at the side that's opposite the angle that's congruent to, to A, which is D, then I have EF. 
But EF is not congruent necessarily to CB, at least it's not indicated that way. So these two triangles are not congruent by angle, angle sine. All right, last one for you. Do I have congruence here? And the answer to that question is going to be, yes, I do. And why do I have congruence here? Well, I have angle, angle, and a side. So I have a side that's not included and two angles that are congruent, angle, angle, side. Two angles uh, and a side that's not included between the two angles. And then I take a look at the side that's congruent and it's opposite the same angle in question. So these two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side.